Welcome to Creating a Life in Music. My name is Mike Salo. I'm a guitarist and music educator from Minneapolis, Minnesota in the US, and I wanna know how other musicians make their living, how they got there, how they sustain it, and most importantly, the insights and tips they may have for the rest of us. I interview musicians from all over the world, from various parts of the music industry to break down the question, how do I do music full time? So join me as we discover the many different ways to create a life in music. If you're a guitar player who's ever wanted to attend music college but couldn't because it's too expensive or too far away, or maybe you're just beyond that point in your life and you're just too busy with your own family and your own career to commit to something like that, I would highly recommend going and checking out fretboardbiology.com. At only $29 a month, Fretboard Biology takes out all the guesswork, putting the right things in the right order. It's highly structured, highly organized, college-level guitar program designed by one of the top guitar educators on the planet, Joe Elliott. Joe was head of the guitar department at McNally Smith for a number of years, where he designed the entire guitar curriculum, as well as being head over at Musicians Institute in Hollywood for many, many years. He knows what you need to know. And you can get 50% off your first month when you go to fretboardbiology.com slash register hyphen salo, my last name, that's S-A-L-O-W. So fretboardbiology.com slash register hyphen salo. All right. So yeah, dude, I, what I was going to say before is that, um, uh, I, I mean, I, I know of you from the YouTube stuff and then, uh, I saw you, maybe it was your podcast. Maybe it was, um, Rudy's podcast or was Rudy a guest on your podcast? Um, cause I follow Rudy and I saw him, I saw him post something and it was you two. And, um, so I saw that recently and you guys had some fun conversations that look like was that your podcast yes sir okay cool yeah yeah. so how did the youtube thing start because i've been aware of you and followed your stuff for quite a while like i feel like you've been you've been doing it for quite a bit and did you start that like relatively young yeah so uh i've actually never said my age because i'm saving that for a million subscribers (laughs) i can tell you i can tell you off camera but (laughs) uh (laughs) It, it it's part of the you know gotta get people it's to the uh, thing. yeah yeah right but yeah it's interesting you say that just because i feel like i haven't been I, I mean i started posting videos online and actually trying to uh you know do something with it since 2017 uh okay but youtube was more of a 2020 thing because uh i got a shout out from davy 504 and that's kind of like what launched my channel but pre-2020 was instagram Really? Okay. I swear. I swear. I saw your stuff. I think I saw your stuff on YouTube first though. Probably. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm full of shit. I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, like I know YouTube is just like a beast of a platform and it, it's way better than Instagram. And yeah, I like, I do have videos that I posted on YouTube pre 2020, but they didn't actually blow up until after 2020 because that's when i got it yeah that's when i got the shout out from davy and uh then all my old videos that were actually good they started going nuts in the algorithm interesting yeah dude i because i i think i actually i do think it was when i found you first was was youtube because when i went to hit you up i was like oh i bet she has an instagram and then i looked and i was like oh he follows me and i was like I don't follow him on Instagram, but I think like, I'm pretty sure I've subscribed to you on YouTube if not, or I've at least been following you a long time. That's the hard thing about YouTube is like you can follow someone, but it just, even whether, whether you do or not, it's like still shows up all the time in your, in your, um, your uh, recommended or whatever. So I, I find myself, I have a really hard time subscribing to people, not because I don't want to, it's because like if they like the, the, the algorithm, like still rewards you with their stuff, like, even if you don't subscribe. And that's yeah. why everyone's like fucking subscribe to my shit. Whereas <laughs> Instagram's so different. Like you have to follow in order to get the feed. True. I mean, yeah, YouTube, I mean, at least modern day YouTube is certainly more, uh, it, like it bases the content that it's going to show you based off of your history. So right. yeah. Like if you're watching someone frequently, then it'll show you, I mean, no surprises there, but yeah. Yeah. It's just interesting. It's a little bit different in the sense, like for some reason, that's much easier to, to, uh, remember a person on YouTube, whereas Instagram, it's just a flood of constant stuff. And like TikTok's that way too. 
and something about YouTube, you, you remember someone's page, you go back to it a million times and then you forget that you're not subscribed and then you finally do that. And that's why people are so like subscribed to my channel, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. because I know you're watching this and you need to subscribe. Yeah. So 100%. do you have the experience in that, in that, in that regard? Like of like, I know you're watching this and you're just not subscribing. So subscribe to my shit. Like from a producer? Like yeah, a yeah, 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 yeah. Perspective. Oh yeah, man. Like, and it's annoying because if you watched my old videos, you probably would have noticed and like even some of my more recent ones, uh, like I, I always tell my followers not to subscribe. Like don't okay. like, don't follow I, me. I, I have, I've, I've noticed that. Yeah, yeah. Right? I forget and about that. Yeah. It's just like a joke, like don't do it. But now I just feel like, I don't know, maybe some of them still do. I, I'm sure some of them still do, but like, I just feel like, uh, you know, with how YouTube is right now, I, I just feel like you, you really need to make it easy for them. Like, I, I don't know, some people, if they're seeing me for the first time, they might not get the humor. Like, I don't know, but anyway, I, I'm kind of focusing more on short form content lately anyway. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. But. Well, no, it's really good. I think you, you've carved out a personality in that regard within the YouTube uh, realm. But I think it's, it's, uh, I think it's a funny shtick uh, because now that you mention it, it's like, oh yeah, I do. I did know that. Like, um, um, and uh, I think it's cool, man. I think, I don't think you should stop doing that. If you've ever thought that it's, it's definitely the thing, no one else does it. So it's like, you've, you've carved that out as like, this is the thing that I do here. That's fair. I yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good thing. I, I always just in my mind, like, cause I want, like, I'm going to do an age reveal at 1 million followers on YouTube. So it's like, don't subscribe to my channel age reveal at one mil. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. How long has the age reveal thing uh, been going like that running joke too long because uh 250 K was like the guitar collection reveal. And then I didn't know what to do for a reveal next. And I figured, uh, the hell with it. I'll just do my age. Cause I know like people kind of care about that. Like if you go to Google and you type in any famous person's name, it's going to be like, not, not that I'm like super famous or anything, but like, if you look up their name, it's like age, net worth, wife, height, like all these things. Right. So. Yeah. yeah you, yeah. you have, you have a youth about you that's been there since I first saw you about five years ago. So <laughs> you, you also have this like ability to be like, you can't tell how old I am because you have like, if like, like me, it's like, there's gray in my beard. Like there's probably a good guess in there somewhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like a hundred percent. Like, I don't know your age, but I, it's definitely between 30 and 40. Like there's no, there way you go. Exactly. Yeah. Like you like, yeah, it's somewhere there. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a for sure thing. Um, did you, so I, I had this, uh, for some reason I had in, in my mind that you attended like Berkeley or a music school of some sort. And is that That's, true? Did you, what, yeah. did, which, 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 where, which, where'd you go to school? Cause you're from Canada, right? Yes. Okay. Um, where at, whereabouts in Canada or is that something else that you're going to reveal later? I live on the East coast. Yeah. So <laughs> okay. it's, it's not like, not like super <laughs> private, but, um, yeah, okay. I went to, uh, St. Francis Xavier university on the east coast of Canada here. It's the only university east of Montreal that offered a jazz program and I wanted to do jazz. I didn't want to do classical or anything. So yeah, uh, sure. all the other universities, that's what it would have been. And I was not so interested in that. So yeah, I went to that program. I went to that university and it, it's not a music school per se, but I took the music program, right? So it's not right. like Berkeley in that sense, but yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Very cool. How was your experience there? Did you, um, did you, uh, I know I, I asked this because many people who go to music school, they end up not finishing. Did you end up finishing getting your degree there? I did. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I, that's actually my degree in the, in the back. You can kind of, Oh see yeah. It. I kind of see that. Yep. Yep. I but, see mine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in my year, there were only seven guitar players and I was the only one that finished. It certainly, oh. yeah, it, it kicks your ass, man. Like there were times when I wanted to quit and you know, some of the most challenging hardships I've ever faced in my life. Uh, but some of the best times I've ever faced or I've, I've ever got to an, ex got to experience as well. Uh, you know, during my time at St. of X, it was, it was amazing, but yeah. 
<laughs> Very cool, man. Yeah. Was that something that you had always wanted to pursue? Like when you were in high school, where you're like, I want to go to school for music. Was that a conscious thing? Was that uh, something like I asked because I, for me, it was like I'm doing music and it kind of seemed the only route. So I just continued going down that road. Or was this something that you had to decide upon? Like maybe I'll go to school for this or maybe I'll do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I 100% know what you're saying. And for me, like when I was in high school, I mean, oh, like I, I'm not a, I was never a dumb kid. You know, I was just going to throw that in there. just a little bit of a flex. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I, t I took calculus, I took physics and I took like hard shit because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And in grade 12, I did decide that I wanted to pursue music, but I wanted to have all those other courses as like a backup sort of thing. So I took them. I mean, in retrospect, there was no point in taking those. I should have just like not taken them and used that time for different things. Uh, but anyway, I took them. Yeah. And then I ended up uh, going to school for music as we've already established. And uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of knew that I wanted to do it and I never had a plan B. I, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do if I didn't. So uh, and that is something that we can dive into because th there was a time during my uh, run at university where I might have had to go with a plan B. Ultimately, I didn't have to, but that's something that we could talk about if you wanted to. Yeah, if you're willing to talk about that, I mean, I think it's a it's a valuable point because I think um, as you as we know, like you know, it's it's an, it's not a it's not uncommon for people pursuing music and art to to have these moments of like, Oh shit, I might not be able to do this. Um, and that's what it sounds like you're talking about. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And I was fucking delusional because I thought that I was good. I wasn't, I was the best guitar player in my high school and I played in the concert bands and the jazz band. I got awards for like the best soloist in jazz band and all that stuff. But when I went to music school, I got humbled because everybody around me is like way better. But here's the thing. I don't know how much better than me they are. Right. And in my second year, it was a four year program. I remember I was playing a show and my professor who uh, was the jazz, uh, the, the guitar professor, he attended to check out the show. Right. And he would later become chair of the department. So, you know, his, his name carried some weight, right? Anyway, he watched the show and then uh, during the intermission, he said, hey, Brandon, I just want you to come to my office on Monday, okay? And I was like, all right, sure. <laughs> so let's do it. And anyway, um, I went to the office, had no idea what to expect. And he looked at me and he sat me down. He's like, if you play like that for your level exam at the end of the year, you are going to fail. And basically what this, yeah, like what this level exam was, it's like every student had to do it at the end of their uh, first two years. So you, you basically your first two years was spent preparing for this exam. Like it was, they, they actually got rid of the exam because it was kicking too many students asses and like they were, <laughs> yeah. So I was just like, okay, fuck man. Like in that it was it was at that point I had to start thinking about plan B. I was like, what if this is not going to work out, man? Like, what if I can't pull it off, right? So uh, anyway, I basically like you know how they say you can only sacrifice, uh, you can only have two things out of the three: sleep, social life, or good grades. Well, I basically sacrificed my social life, uh, and well, long story short, I ended up acing it, but uh, not without lots of effort. That's for sure. <laughs> If you're a guitar player or bass player, you should really have a copy of Guitar Pro Tablature software. I've been using Guitar Pro for like 15 years, and I really can't live without it. At this point, it's sort of an industry standard within the guitar education realm, and it's really easy to use. You can make all your licks and write out all your songs, and you can actually use it in conjunction with ultimateguitar.com, where you can download Guitar Pro files and learn all your favorite songs. So I couldn't recommend this software enough. And if you use the code MikeGP at checkout, you can get 10% off your copy of Guitar Pro 8. That's Mike, M-I-K-E-G-P at checkout, guitar-pro.com. Yeah, man. I mean, there there is, when I was in music college, it was the same thing, the social life thing. It was like, 
I mean, I had a girlfriend, but like I had like no friends I hung out with ever. And even the girlfriend at the time, I remember it was like very like, we're not hanging out. I have to practice <laughs> like type thing. So that's so funny that you mentioned that like one of the three, cause I forgot about that. Cause I remember that in college that kind of was, yeah, it was like you, you, you pick. And I was like, well, I want sleep. So I guess I'll get rid of my friends. I don't get rid of them, but you just weren't really hanging out with anyone. Like I didn't really make any friends in the, in the years I was at school, a couple at the very end, I, I carried on, I think maybe cause I knew I was, I was finishing up. So I kind of pulled back a little bit um, or, 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 or whatever the reason, but that's interesting. You said that. Yeah. Cause, and that's also interesting that you had that experience because um, uh I, we had similar stuff at this high, the high school, the college I went to where there were things where I remember kids like having panic attacks, like before exams, just being like, Ooh, and because the teacher was very intense or they were like, you gotta have this memorized, you know, the expectations of, of the knowledge of the fretboard and the knowledge of like how well you're going to read music and just the long list of all the things that you needed to get down. And so many students who came into the college I went to were like, you know, they were, they, they were kids who played in rock bands and read tabs. So all of a sudden they're in a college and they're like, do you know all your triads and all the inversions? And can you read them on staff paper? And they're like, ah, I don't even know like where a G is on there. Like a lot of the kids like, what well, what's like, and so these kids having panic attacks. And I remember that being very intense. So yeah, it's, and that's really, I feel for you. In that regard, so with that show, that show you're talking about, was that a was that um, a school event? Like, were you playing a, like a, with like the jazz band, or was this like you were playing a show with your band and he was there? Yeah, so I was playing uh, duo guitar and bass, uh, bass player also in the program. We were playing, and it was just duo, and he just showed up to watch. Right? Oh, it was just like a rand, like a like a weekend show. Yeah. And was it jazz? Also, yeah, it was okay. jazz. And and calling it a show is probably like not the most correct term, like because it was at a coffee shop. It was like lunchtime coffee shop, like kind of okay. kind of show. So like I don't, I don't know. I, yeah. Gig. It's a gig. It's a gig. It's still a gig. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like there's there's plenty of those around. So yeah. But but yeah, so that's what it was. And uh yeah, I mean but as you remove instruments, it becomes harder, right? The, yeah, like, yeah. The, if there are five instruments, like you can, I mean, if you're, well, think about like the, the extreme, right? Like if you're in a concert band with like 30 people or like a fucking symphony, you know, your part is one thirtieth of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. If there are 30 musicians, but if there's only two of you, well, you're half. So you carry a lot more weight, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. And um, especially without a drummer, I've done those. I did a, I did a um, wedding, uh, cocktail hour, um, not too long ago. And it was me, a saxophone player and a bass player. Um, and it was, it was, a, it was weird. Um, but it worked, it was cool. It was fun. Um, and, uh, yeah, you always get thrown in those weird things, but I can't imagine as a student and then having your professor walk in and, and so, so one thing I should, I wanted to ask is, um, your experience there, did you have, so I, that changed I had similar experiences with like intimidation. That sounds bad. Like not like intimidation, like from them, but like I felt intimidated by the whole process to the point where I was like, I really got to fucking practice like my ass off. And did you notice any sort of like substantial difference between like that period in your life and your, your improvement or your, you know, how, how much you improved on the instrument compared to like previous years. Cause for me, it was like, I felt like I did this all my life. And then I went to music school and it went like that within like three years. Did you have a similar experience at all? Oh, a hundred percent, man. Like certainly, I mean, I was kind of fortunate in my younger years, I guess, because, uh, like I started guitar when I was 10 I started taking lessons when I was 12. I joined the, uh, school bands when I was in the seventh grade. How old are you in the seventh grade? Like, like, uh, thir- uh, 12, 12 or 13. Right. Right. Something like that. Yeah. Maybe I think so. 12 yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Give or take. <laughs> yeah. So like, then I was like, I, I got some progress. I, I made progress there just by like being surrounded by other musicians and like actually having to read and stuff. Uh, 
so I, I, I definitely made some good gains during that time, but I mean, man, it doesn't compare to like actually f- like formal education. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite the game changer, like especially the expectation. And I, I think just being around other musicians who know what the hell they're doing. And then you realize. So one thing that I realized when I was in music school and one thing I realized I ended up teaching at the same music school after I graduated, it was this idea of like, when I was there, I was like, I'm not competing with my peers. Like I'm actually not competing is the wrong word. I, I need to be playing at the level of the teachers because once I'm out of here, I'm in the same playing field as the teachers. And that was a real, like, like mind opener. And that was something I always taught the students. Once I became a teacher was like, I would say that to them, they'd be like, Oh, you know, well, I'm this, oh, this, I'm like, don't worry about him over there. Like you are going to be at the same playing field as me and the other guys here. Like once you're done, you have to kind of think of that way. And for me personally, I was like, Oh my God, like I, I, I need to, I really got to work my ass off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause you look at your teachers and those, those are your, you know, you, you, you put them on this pedestal and then you're like, Oh God, I got to take them off that pedestal. Cause I got to, I kind of, I kind of got to be there. I kind of got to be there soon, like in a couple of years. So I got to start thinking that that's possible and I work my ass off. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, dude, that's, that's great. I, I, uh, I, and so long story, Bring that back around. So did you end up pursuing the, uh, the social media YouTube stuff shortly at, well, I mean, that, that maybe puts your age and, uh, and I don't know if I want to, I don't want to, <laughs> well, well if I say, yeah, cause that like, people could like add up numbers if I start to ask, like, so did you start doing the YouTube stuff right after? Um, I, I, let me put it this way. How about instead of that was the idea of doing YouTube and online courses, a, a clear thought process as you were coming out of college, whether you pursued it within a year or within 10 years, (laughs) was it one of those things you're like, Oh, I really want to start doing this type of thing. Or did it just kind of, what's the story behind the choice to really delve into that? I guess. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. It takes away. (laughs) Yeah. And before I get into that, I just want to compliment you on uh, your mindset regarding the professors and the instructors, because I never actually even considered that. Like when you, like when I was attending the institution, right. I never thought like, Hmm, these guys are my competitors. Like the, the actual teachers, like I never thought about that, but that is such a great thing to instill in students. Like, yeah. And I, yeah. I guess competition is the, the wrong word. It's more of like, these are, are the guys out in the playing field. Once I graduate, like they're the dudes out there. I don't know. I mean, it is competing. The bar. Yeah, it is competing, but it's like, they're the workforce that I am about to join. And yeah. that, maybe that's the better way to put it. And then, so I should be at the level of that workforce. Um, and it's, it's very true. Cause it really, we really, when I, like you think about it, it's like, once you graduate, it's not, I mean, those, those professors aren't any different than you. Once you graduate, they're at the, they're at the level, they're at the professional level. Now you got your degree and that's what they have. And they're doing gigs that you can try to do yourself or, you know, they could be taking gigs. It's, it's such a, you know, competition. The, the word competition in music is such a, um, What's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's controversial. Oh, so yeah, to, it is. to say, so I don't always want to say it cause people are like, it's not a competition and it's not, but there's, there's something similar happening there. Um, but yeah, sorry. I, I went off there and, and, but, um, I appreciate it. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Um, yeah. hundred percent. Um, and yeah. So the choice, yeah. To do the online YouTube stuff, was that a, was that a planned thing or was it kind of like, I think I'm going to start doing this now. Yeah, it wasn't really the plan out of uh, school because out of school, what I wanted to do was play on the cruise ships. And I actually auditioned for a couple of ships and I made the cut uh, for a line. And then there was another line that I, like cruise line that I auditioned for that I didn't make the cut for. Um, but anyway, long story short, I didn't end up doing it because I was in love. Are you, okay. It was or am or... 
Kurt. So, yeah, like like my my girlfriend at the time, like, <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't want to leave her, but uh, I mean, we're broken up now. I mean, that was that's old news at this point. Like, we've been broken yeah. up for years. So, uh, no no regrets either. Like, we we, we yeah. shouldn't have stayed together. But uh, I wish her well. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Uh, to answer your question, um. I mean, online was not what I was thinking about. No. And then what kind of drew you into wanting to do that? Or was it, so what, what was the first one? So Instagram, was that the first one you started with? Well, it was YouTube, but I learned how hard YouTube was. So then I went to Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then you, uh, how long after you started that stuff, did you decide like, Oh, there's a, there's a market here. I'm going to, I'm going to create some courses. Cause you have several courses out, right? Uh, I mean, I've made a few in my day, but like, I really only have one main program. That's actually wearing the shirt. 52. Yeah. Yeah. Player. That one. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So at what point did you decide like, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try to pursue that. Did, was, was that deep into it or was that early on where you're going, um, I'm doing the social media. I should probably get something together. Um, and it's, it's educational on the edu- educational side. Or was that like some, well, I guess where was the thought process along the way there? Honestly, uh, I didn't actually think about selling anything until like, like I didn't think about creating a program or course or anything until, I was like two years into it because I was just, man, I was going so ham uploading content, but I was doing it for nothing. And I was broke. I was actually slinging Coca-Cola at the time. I was a traveling stock boy, uh, throwing pop on the shelf and you know, yeah, that's what, that's what I was doing. So I was like, man, like, okay, like this is cool. Like I've got a nice following here. I've like got a hundred thousand followers, uh, after two years and, this can't be it though. Like I can't just like not ever make money. Like I, otherwise I'm just going to keep throwing pop on the shelf. Right. So like there, there needs to be a way out. And, uh, I had people, like I was already teaching some Skype lessons and everything. Cause Skype was a thing back then, not zoom or, or Google meet, but, uh, yeah, anyway, Google yeah, let's just... wear random, but yeah, yeah. But, uh, anyway, so basically I was like, okay, I'm teaching anyway, man. Like, I'm just going to take everything that I'm telling students because I'm telling them all the same shit anyway. I'm just going to put it into a curriculum, right? And then they have questions like I'll just do like a, a Zoom call every week with the group for it and see how that goes. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. It's been going pretty well for you. How long has it been out? Yeah, uh, I launched in 2019, August. So it's like three and a half years old at this point. Uh, it's a lot different now than it was when it, well, then uh, compared to version one. That's a lot better. Um, but yeah, so it's about three, three and a half years old at this point. And uh, yeah. It's exciting. That, that's it takes, it take, take, taking over a big part of your, uh, your daily. It's a pretty much your, is it your full-time gig now at that point? Yeah, it is. It doesn't actually take a ton of time day to day because when you build an online program, you only have to build it once in theory. I spent six months building 52 week guitar player. I was working on it full time and then I launched it, but that was only version one. So, um, I think it was in May of 2021. Yeah. I think that was when I decided that I needed to update everything. So that's when I took 14 months, (laughs) rebuilt the entire program, uh, starting from scratch, right? Like I rebuilt everything and wow. Yeah. It took me 14 months of working on it full time to complete version two, but I completed that this past summer in July. So now I've just been, that's probably why you see me more on Instagram and YouTube now, because like, I'm actually back to making content. So you took quite a bit bit of a break there. Yeah. Like even if you look at my YouTube channel, you'll see like a big gap in my uploads because like, I just wasn't posting a lot of content at the time. And like, even still, like when it comes to long form YouTube content, I'm not posting much. I want to get back into it. Uh, so that's kind of the plan for next quarter, but yeah. Okay, cool. You said quarters. So you're very much in lot. Li- you're thinking through things in quarters. Yeah. I, I, I like think, a, yeah, I, I think about things. I try to think about things long-term uh, because I mean, I mean, every, any successful person you ever talk to thinks that way. Right. Mm-hmm. So um, 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, with my model now that I use, like my business model to sell the program, uh, I do it every quarter. I have basically have it closed off. It's open right now, but it's only open for two weeks. And then for like uh, on April 1st, it's going to close again. And it's going to be closed for two and a half months. And then mid May it will reopen. Uh, and then, you know, more students will come in for two weeks uh, and then I'll close it off again. Right. So that's kind of the strategy. And for uh, enrollment, for enrollment, you said, yes, sir. Cool. And yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's interesting because previously I was thinking more like on a monthly basis. Uh, but with this new t- model, it's like, I think more in terms of quarters. Uh, but I'm also thinking like in the back of my mind, like, the, the goal is to have this program run without me. Right. So I need mm-hmm. to think about things like that, that weighed on my mind when I hired my editor recently. So like my content, like I've actually been getting some nice comments on my content because of, uh, it, it's just a, of a higher quality lately, like my short from content, because I made the decision to hire an editor because I thought to myself, okay, if I could free up the time that I'm using to editing to, to edit, what would I do with that freed up time? well, I would probably make more content. <laughs> so, and then from making more content, I increase the amount of eyes that are seeing me. And some of those eyes are going to convert, you know, they go down the funnel and they're going to become students. And, you know, the, the idea is that I have like a thousand people in my program that are renewing their subscription. Uh, and yeah. So, cause right now it's like 2,400 to enroll but you have access for two years and all the bells and whistles and which some people think is a lot, but I mean, you get what you pay for. So anyway, yeah. um, the idea is to like, okay, if, if I can bring enough value to those people, like I don't have to find new people and like in business, the people that are most likely to like, if they've already invested with you once, there's a high likelihood that they'll do it again. Mm-hmm. That's like business one oh one type shit. So like if I can bring them enough value, you know, the plan is, you know, just keep bringing them value and having them, have them keep renewing. But that, that's like way longer term. Cause that's like, I have to make sure that they're having a good time for two years and then they want to renew. And then two years after that, they still want to renew. So, cause in the past it was all lifetime, like before 2023 and anyone who joined it was, they got lifetime access, but I just, I never really felt comfortable with that. Cause it's like, well, I'm basically committing to doing this my entire life, which I have no problem with, but like, it's just a sweet deal. It's too good of a deal for some people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. So where, where did you learn uh, this business mindset stuff? Did you learn that from research books, uh, podcasts? My man, I've spent like multiple five figures uh, just through like on in online courses and masterminds. Like I, I, I don't know if you know who Sam ovens is, but I, I joined his quantum mastermind, which was Sam who Sam ovens. Like, ovens. Uh, I don't know. I might know him. O V E N S like literally ovens. Uh, and I joined his quantum mastermind and it's like a year program, but yeah, you gotta set aside a nice chunk of change. It costs 30 grand uh, for the year. Damn. But the thing is though, you're in a room now with people that can afford that. And like, these people are smarter than me. They're more successful than me. They're older than me. Like they're wiser than me. And that's the room you want to be in, right? You don't want to be in a room with people who, uh, you are the smartest, right? So like, right. Yeah. That, that, yeah. How did you, um, uh, come across this stuff? How'd you make the decision and in, 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 uh, what was the thought process, thought process behind? Like, I need to seek some advice and, and this is why I'm going to go with this guy. Was it, uh, something you've been following for a while? I did follow him for a while. He just looked the most legit because with online, like there's so many people online that they're not really in it to help people. They're in it to make money. Right. So Mm -hmm. you got to be able to like kind of sort through that. Um, And then the the reason that I was prompted to actually do it is because I just like, I, he, he was years ahead of me, like, and he, he's successful and like, man, like I, I'm not going to figure this shit out on my own. Or if I do, it's going to, like I can speed up the process if I use cash to help me. Right. So it was like, it was only when I launched 52 week guitar player that I started making some money because I was super broke beforehand. Uh, So once I started making some money, I was able to then reinvest in my education in like, uh, I know I didn't go to business school or anything, but there were people out there doing business that 
were doing it online and they knew what they were doing. So I'm like, man, I got to learn from these guys. Yeah, it's such a valuable thing. I mean, the reason I ask is because, uh, I mean, I, I uh, have friends who've done similar things. Like I know, uh, like Al, we talked about Al earlier before we got on the call. He's he's invested a lot into that. And I, and I listened to a few different guys online who are preach that. They're like, you know, invest in yourself, invest in yourself, buy courses, get you like uh, educate yourself on all these things because it'll never be wasted money. They're like wasted money is not buying a course and learning. That's never wasted. Um, and that's, yeah, that's really cool. You did that. That's awesome. Um, was that you said, um, I, I guess I probably know the answer to that because I think like, how does one even come to these conclusions and decide like, Oh, I need to educate myself in this realm. And this is the path I will take. Cause so many people go down the road of like, Oh, I probably should get a degree in this. So is this just from like online searches or, or from did any like peers of yours or friends go like, Oh, Hey, you should think about maybe like a mastermind. Cause I, the mastermind thing, I know a lot of people, different people have those type of things. Yeah. So what's the question? Uh, how, like, how do you, how do you come to that, that, um, uh, that realization of like, oh, I need to start educating myself down this path and this is the way I'm going to go as opposed to going down the traditional road of like getting a, a degree. Because some people might think to just go back to like school and mm -hmm. learn that stuff. You know what I'm saying? It, was that something that came through influence of people around you or was it self-discovered? Self-discovered. I never th ever thought about... Uh pursuing a, a traditional like business degree or anything like that. Um, but I, I just, um, yeah, I, I, uh, wanted to learn and I wanted to do it semi fast. And I, I just knew that these guys, like, cause I consumed a lot of their free content online. I just knew they were legit and yeah, man, like it, it was just, it, it kind of seems like the only option, you know? Um, yeah, for sure. Especially if you're trying yeah. to build that, that business. So, so you made a decision of like, I want to create some sort of course, or maybe you created the course already and then, um, decided to kind of invest in, in yourself in this way. Um, and so within that time frame, you're, you're doing stuff on the internet, you're making content, you're trying to figure out how to kind of create some sort of program, uh, to, to create income for yourself. Did you, um, did, did you ever do any like lessons beforehand or were you gigging during those time, that time frame? Uh, anything else like in the, in the music realm that you were doing beforehand or, or currently or, or whatever, was that something that was part of the income up until this point? Yeah, it was totally a hundred percent. Like I was teaching lessons over zoom or uh, Skype in like before all this stuff a little bit and I was gigging, but to me, the gigging, like at least that I was doing when I decided to stop, it was just, it was a really easy decision to make because the band that I was playing with, like for starters, when I was in school, I was playing in multiple bands because, you know, all my peers are musicians and like we're hanging out together. We're going to class together. We're jamming together. We're playing together. When I left that environment, all those bands dissolved, right? Because we live in all over the place. So then once I finished that uh finished school uh i joined another band and we started playing shows around the city but the thing is i was playing bass because like nobody wants to play bass and these sh these gigs were so easy like i the songs were like three chord songs and i, I just finished my jazz degree right so i could show it and I, i'm gonna sound like so cocky but like you could too like by the way like we could show up to the gig and play the material like i mean sure like especially i'm playing bass nobody can hear bass like i could show up to the gig and i could play the material uh just for practicing on my own in my room or something and get through it right it, i yeah. definitely fuck things up but you know i could still get through the show right uh and the singer wanted to rehearse like three times a week for three hours then we would <sighs> play like the three hour show my cut would be 75 bucks it's like okay so i just <laughs> One of the best things you can do as a musician is to protect your own hearing. I've been using these Eargasm high fidelity earplugs for months now, and I really love them. They're nice and discreet, high quality, and they don't make any of the sound muffled. They let in the right frequencies that I need on gigs or at shows. 
You can get 10% off your order if you use code MSALO10 at checkout. That's my first initial M, my last name Salo, S-A-L-O-W, 10 at checkout to get 10% off your order at eargasm.com. Anyway, what I was going to say is like, yeah, so it's like after 12 hours of work put in, I'm walking away with 75 bucks. Like this is, <laughs> this is not yeah. worth it. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally get it. I actually had a period where I stopped gigging as heavily for that very reason, where it was like, I had done a string of gigs where they paid okay, but they'd be like, Hey, learn our set. And I'd show up and I'd get, you know, 200 bucks, whatever. And then I'd never get a call again. And it was mainly because I had a guy who was regular. And then I only got the call when he wasn't there and he was there most of the time. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, so I just showed up for the sub gig for a guy who's there all the time. <laughs> so I learned all this shit for this one thing and I'm never going to get a call again. And it's like, uh, it, I, I had those moments. And, and what actually changed for me was I finally got into a situation that was the opposite of what you were saying, which is like, yeah, man, we're just going to show up and play the set and it's going to be 300 bucks. I was like, sweet. That's mm-hmm. what I want. I don't want yeah. to have to deal with fucking like, we need to rehearse for three. It's like, I don't need to, man. Like, give me the set list. I'll write charts. I'll show up with an iPad and you won't even notice that I'm reading. Like, I'll just play through the tunes. And that's what I do now with a lot of the gigs. That's the only gigs I take, actually. Every once in a while, I'll do one that I, that sounds cool. But right. otherwise, yeah, dude, I've totally been there with that where it's like, it's like, no, like I had one group hit me up who had friends in them. They were, they were friends in the group and they were like, Hey, do you want to play guitar for this? We have a lot of gigs. I'm like, Oh, cool. And I was like, do you guys do subs? Cause I can't commit to the whole summer. And they were like, no, we don't do subs. We have to play all the gigs. I was like, eh, no, thank you. I think that's a common thread. You know, I talked to another uh, Canadian fellow recently, Roy Ziv, and he has a similar story of um, getting into creating more online. Do you know Roy? Yeah, man. Uh, Roy is actually probably my best friend in this space. Uh, I'm not sure if he would say the same, but that's, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would say he's probably like my best friend in the space. Yeah. 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 Dude. He's, you guys are very similar in, in your, your traje- trajectories as far as like what you're doing online. You both have courses. You both have a large following cross platform. You're both Canadian, <laughs> both good looking. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that was going to say that next. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so there you go, man. Um, that's cool. Roy was great. Roy, um, his, his episode actually had a really nice response. Um, so far I've already posted his, I talked to him eh, three, four weeks ago. So he's a great guy. Um, had a really fun conversation. Um, so I, we talked about, uh, education and talked about you being in school. And one thing I think is very interesting perspective is someone who has gone and finished a, a college degree in music. And I want to hear your opinions on the validity of achieving or receiving a college degree in music and whether or not it's something that you strongly believe in, or if you think um, there's pitfalls of that, because I get the question all the time of, should I pursue music college, you know, or is it, is it too expensive? Like if, is it a waste of money? Can I just learn these things on my own? Um, and I know my stance it's, it's somewhat nuanced in the fact it's kind of situational for people. So, um, but I want to know what, what your thoughts are on that. Yeah. Great question. So the short answer, don't do it. <laughs> 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 Not worth it. Uh, the, the amount of debt you'll accumulate, like I'm fortunate now that like my debt is long gone, but I have friends that are still dealing with that. Right. I've, I know people older than me, they're still dealing with that. Uh, but right here, this guy right here. Yeah. Still yeah. paying mine off, man. It's rough, man. Um, so like, but he, here's the, here's the pro with music university or like a, a music program is the fact that you are held accountable in a way that you would not be otherwise. When you're in music university, you have to show up and you have to perform, you have to practice. And if you don't, you're wasting your money, right? So that is a pro. That being said, you can get all the skills that music, uh, music school would teach you on your own just by playing with great musicians. It's just, 
are you going to be performing with great musicians that frequently? Are you going to be playing with them like a couple times a week? Are you going to be practicing eight to fucking 10 hours a day? Like, you know, it, it's like, I, I don't think a lot of people are capable of doing that on their own. Uh, and like, are you supporting yourself? Do you have roommates? Like when you're going to school for it, usually like, I mean, you're going to school full time, you're a full time student. Uh, you're taking out loans and that's what you're doing all of the time. But if you're say like, I don't know, 18 or 19 and you're, are you moving out or are you staying home? If you're staying home with your family, then it's more like if, if, if you, if your cost of living is not taking up all of the time, like, well, your full-time schedule, then, uh, you're in a good position because then you can basically do music full time, whether that be practicing or learning, uh, or, or jamming with others or going through online music programs instead of, uh, you know, music, uh, actual music school. Right. But I mean, at the end of the day, like I, 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 cause I've had this conversation with myself and I thought, you know, I wouldn't actually recommend it. That's, that's an interesting stance. Cause like I, I, I have a part of me that, 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 uh, I, I, here, I've, here's what I said to all my students. So I, I teach at a high school now, not full time. I teach, uh, I teach like a music theory class and I teach an ensemble. So I'm very part time there. Um, but the students know I taught at a college. The students know I went to music college and they'll often ask. And, uh, I always say, this is a really weird response, but it makes sense. Um, I always say, you know, who's paying, like, are you paying for this or are your parents paying for it? And they, if they say, well, my parents are paying, I said, how supportive are your parents? They're very supportive. They can do whatever I want. I was like, go to music college. You want to go to music college, go to music college. If mom and dad are paying and they're very supportive about it, meaning they're like, yes, do whatever you want. We got you then go to music college because who then it doesn't, the debt doesn't matter. Cause it's really, really comes down to the, the debt is very weighing on a human being. Like to have just to come out of college with, with that much debt is a lot. Or I ask how much is it? You know, if they're like, Oh, I want to go here and it's this much. It's like, all right. You know, the, the, the payout for a music degree is much less than the payout for many other degrees you could go achieve. And that's the unfortunate truth. Now, someone might argue and say, well, you know, I went to music college and I went and did this. And it's like, yes, but like a lot of those like high paying, the only job you can really need a degree for within music is, is collegiate. Like if you want to teach at a college, need a degree. It's the only one. You don't need a degree to go play for a fucking Nickelback. Not that you're going to do that, but like you don't need a degree to go play in Nashville. You don't need a degree to go play in LA. You don't need a degree to open your own recording studio. You don't need a degree to open up your own lesson studio. Like you don't need any of that. So I think when it comes to, but however, however, the education you'll get from a, from a degree is hard to match outside of a college because if it's not provided by the college, like you said, you're held accountable to a certain level. So it's really hard to replicate that outside of that environment because it becomes very much on the individual to, to held, hold themselves accountable. Whereas in a college, it's like, like we talked about, like you have all these moments of like, sheer uncomfort where you're like, Oh my God, like I really need to practice because this, this teacher just made me just scared the shit out of me <laughs> or something. So you, you, you rise up to the occasion. Whereas yeah, I did. Yeah. Like you said, like I highly doubt uh, it's just way more difficult without that situation. Um, but it's fucking expensive. And uh, is it worth it? If it's that expensive, I'd argue maybe not. I don't know. It's hard to say, but yeah, when I'm on the same page where it's like, don't fucking do it. It's expensive. Yeah, man. I My father know. didn't really want me to do it, which I understand. <laughs> My mom was more okay with it, but I mean, at the end of the day, like everything worked out, but yeah, I that's, mean, it's hard coming from, I think, I think people might look at, you or me and go like, well, you seem you're doing it. Like you're doing music. And I would credit 
a lot of my abilities to that experience. I don't think I'd be in the same place. Um, Mm -hmm. So there's that argument as well. Like it's like, there's plenty of people who went to music school and wouldn't necessarily be in the position they are now. So you can argue that. Um, maybe Steve, I wouldn't have transcribed a bunch of Zappa and gone and played for Zappa if he didn't go to Berkeley, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, or maybe like dream theater, well, definitely dream theater wouldn't have been a thing had they not gone to Berkeley for a little bit. Um, so it's a, yeah, interesting. So you can argue that too. So I've always talked with, um, one of my good friends is, a um, was the head of the guitar department over at musicians Institute for like a, for a really long time. Um, Joe Elliott lives in town here. He's, um, a long time friend. He was my old boss at the college I taught at here, but he has always said like, you can't replicate that environment of a music school. Like there's just something about being around peers that do that stuff. That's just hard to replicate otherwise. But anyway, yeah, I'm ranting now. Yeah. I was going to say that's fair though. I mean, I, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, man. Um, yeah. I appreciate you chatting and hanging out. This has been great. Yeah. Yeah. Happy to, man. I've enjoyed yeah, our conversation so far. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess there's a few things I'm always curious about. We can kind of wrap it up here um, as we're getting past the hour point. Um, so one thing that I, I think is always interesting to hear from people is, um, uh, well, actually, you know what? Oh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, we, we already covered that. Um, there was one thing I thought we didn't cover, but we did. We covered that. Um, it, well, ignore i just did that and (laughs) the thing i'm curious about is the 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 question that i feel like sits on so many people's minds about guitar playing or about being a musician is should i strive to be well-rounded or should i pick my lane and go down that lane and what is your opinion on that of like pick a lane and really try to master that or strive to be well-rounded or some mixture or um do you have any thoughts on that Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it comes down to what your goals are. So first, so one must ask them what their goals are. Like, why are they doing this in the first place? Uh, and then kind of reverse engineer how to achieve that goal, right. By looking at other people who have already achieved the goal. So that's like how I just want to like, you know, preface this, but at the end of the day, like if you are a more diverse player, you may get more self-fulfillment from that. If you specialize in one thing, well, would you hire Tommy Emmanuel as a filler for Dream Theater? Probably not, right? (laughs) So there is also that thing. It's like the guy who's only doing one thing and he only ever does one thing, he's probably going to get the show or the gig over someone who wears a lot of hats, right? Right. So that that's, I, and I say the same thing to multi-instrumentalists. Like there's so many people that just love to flex and say they're multi-instrumentalists. It's like, yeah, but you're just mediocre at all of them, bro. Like you're not going to get, <laughs> yeah. like, you're not going to get the gig over someone who only does the one thing. But anyway, that's a different conversation. But um, yeah, so I mean, it ultimately just comes down to the goals of the individual. And if they're obsessed with metal way more than they're obsessed with anything else, well, that's a pretty good indicator that they should stick to metal but if they want if i mean if you're going to be a session player like session players have to be diverse right so you got to know like metal or jazz or country pop music uh finger style or acoustic right i mean so yeah it really comes down to the goals of the individual but at least with what i've just said you can take that information into account when making a decision or whatever when deciding right i personally like to be a little diverse just because like as an online creator, uh, you know, I'm not a session player, right? Um, I can create content as long as people are interested in it. And I like to also be interested in it. And if I were to limit myself to like one genre, I just don't think I would enjoy it as, a, as much. Yeah. I think as an educator too, uh, it's, it's a little bit, uh, more reasonable to, to have many different uh backgrounds so like for me that's one thing that's driven me into wanting to learn more about other genres is as being an educator of like well i kind of feel like i need to know a little bit about everything and and, and i might have my i have my lanes that i go down stronger than others like you know i'm definitely 
more down a like rock metal realm than I am country, for instance. But I have some country chops. I'm not, but I'm not like Brent Mason or something Mm -hmm. um, at all. But there's something there that I could mess around with and hopefully, hopefully help a student if they ask. Um, uh, But yeah, man, yeah, it's great, great answer. Um, (laughs) Thanks. Thank (laughs) you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, if if so, I like to wrap this up in a way where uh, we leave with like a final bit of um, uh, like a final recommendation, I suppose. And and I always wonder like if you were talking to someone who was trying to have a career in music or make a career in teaching or maybe go down the YouTube thing, kind of like what you're doing, like what is like a very single piece of advice you'd be like, you'd instill in that person. Like I, I, I really want to do educational stuff via online social media platforms or even just pursuing music. It could just be as simple as that. Like if you would have any advice to give to someone in that regard, if you could narrow it down to one maybe sentence or paragraph or something. Sure. The biggest needle movers are going to be consistency and studying others. That's a good one. I mean, a hundred percent, right? Like, cause I mean, relating it back to jazz, when you learn jazz, you have to transcribe solos of the greats, right? Because it's not just about the notes. It's about how they're playing the notes. Yeah. And that's a universal lesson that can be applied to anything. If you want to be a great basketball player, I mean, maybe study Michael Jordan or Kobe. Right. Um, so yeah, if you want to be, uh, maybe if you want to have a career in music, especially as an online creator, well, you need to taste good cake to know what good cake tastes like, right? <laughs> you, <laughs> so yeah. you, 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 if you're eating mediocre cake your whole life, you're never going to be able to bake a delicious cake because you've never had it. You don't know what it tastes like. So you need to study others who are the delicious cake, if you will, right? Like yeah. they're delicious for a reason. People are watching, right? So you need to study others and you need to be consistent. And I mean really is if you never quit, you will eventually achieve it, right? You will be re- rewarded, uh, are, are rewarded. You will be rewarded. Right. So, yeah, that's a good one. I think that's great. I think there's a lot behind that idea of like model the greats model, the people who are doing what you want to do. And I think people hesitate on that. Cause they're like, well, I don't want to copy them. It's like, well, you're not like you're learning from what they're doing. And then you're doing it in a way, like doing it in your own way whatever you're going to do in life, you're likely going to approach it with your own voice, whether it's business or it's guitar playing or it's whatever. You're not really ever going to fully replicate or or repeat, especially especially if you're aware of the fact that you don't want to do that. But it's it's something really good to like, like you just said, like I, I think of several people who are doing we we mentioned you, we mentioned Roy Ziv. We can mention a few other people who who have courses out that it's like, oh, you want to do that? Well, study what those guys have been doing and try to do it yourself. And and um I think it, it's interesting you said that then people it's just I think of all these excuses that people come up with when we talk about that stuff, because then the excuse of like, well, they've already done it. I don't want to do that now because I don't want to compete. And I had this conversation with Al Joseph where he was like, we're not competing. Like I, I speak in a different way. I present in a different way and people are going to gravitate towards me in different ways. And they'll gravitate towards this person in different ways. Like, like you and Roy are uh, both have your courses. And I think people will resonate with so certain people resonate with you and certain people res- resonate with Roy. And that's like, not a necessarily competitive thing. Um, and I say that thinking through the excuses of other people saying that I, well, I'm not going to do that because there's people doing it already. Cause I think that's a hold back for some people. You know what I'm saying? Like there's already yeah. people doing that. I'm not going to even try. And it's like, no nah, man, like you can, you can carve a, carve a space out for yourself. I think the people who have carved the spaces out like yourself might not have necessarily worried about that you're just like i am going to carve us out a spot for myself whether people like it or not funny you say that i actually did worry i was that guy i was that guy (laughs) that you are describing right now because i thought like this this was a this was years ago too but i there were already so many guitar players out there with like courses and stuff and i was like man what's the point like 
every <laughs> there's no point uh but then i realized like well i'm gonna try it anyway and see what happens and i tried it and it, it actually worked and uh yeah i mean i totally agree with your point as well saying that like you know everybody has something unique about them that's going to resonate with the viewer or the audience right like some people may like Roy a lot because of the style of music that he plays. Some people may like me a lot because I, I don't know, they they're stupid or there's something wrong with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's why I think, I think that's probably why I would, no, I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. Right. So, I mean, you know, it's totally, it's totally doable. I mean, I, I discover a new guitar influencer every day. I'm not kidding. Like every day I discover a new person who's amazing and I'm just like, damn, like I'm going to quit. It's wild, dude. It, 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 it is a, uh, it's, it's a dangerous rabbit hole to go down if you're already doing it or even if you're not doing it. Cause then you start to go off. Oh, fuck. Like you get into that mindset of like, there's, that's too saturated. And I, and I was listening to a, a podcast recently with one of my a business, uh, kind of dude. And he was like, yeah, everything's saturated. Like just yeah. fucking do it. Like do what you're good at and just car- like work harder than everyone else there. Like it basically he's kind of a tough love guy. He's like, yeah, everything's saturated at this point. Like everything out there, there's a lot of it. <laughs> like you just got to work harder and etch out that spot for yourself. And you're living proof of that. And the fact that like, it's funny that you, that you said you had those doubts. Cause I think it's pretty, you know, could be pretty universal then it's, it's, I think it's can be one of those, uh, insightful comforting things to hear for people who have the same feeling of like, Oh, okay. He had the same thoughts. Okay. Maybe I'm need to get my head out of my ass and not be so worried about it. Totally. Yeah. There could be someone watching this podcast that who knows, maybe in four years, like they'll be on the podcast. Right. I mean, yeah. If if you are going to be, yeah. If you are that person, well, make sure you, you shout out Brandon and you, you shout out Mike and be like, hey, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And like you said, you, you pointed out consistency and stuff and that's, uh, um, I don't know your age, so I can't tell you, I can't, I can't comment on that. I just know that, uh, <laughs> I, 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 in the past few years had that realization of like, you know, shit or get off the pot type thing. Um, which has really put a flame in my ass. Cause it's just like, dude, you gotta just, I've been doing it for a long time and it's in different facets and, and, you know, the college that I worked at for a while, that was kind of like the thing I was going to do closed about five years ago. And, um, you know, five years later, I, I, you know, this is a new podcast. There's a lot of new things I'm doing. And that was, you know, certain things of like, I'm done with those thought processes of like, I don't know. Cause there's so much cash. Like, yeah, I'm just going to do it. Like, mm-hmm. I think you just kind of got to, go for it and, and make it happen and, and work hard and be consistent. I think consistency with hard work is really a powerful thing. You're consistent, you work hard. I mean, it's like you said before, like it's like you, if, with those two things, I think you kind of mentioned it earlier that like it's almost inevitable to be successful with something you're doing. Um, hmm. Hard work and consistency. Obviously there's more to it, but that's a huge key element, I think. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. And I mean, here's this real simple way to explain that kind of stuff. It's like, okay, doing consistent hard work for years may suck, but I mean, it's like, if you can imagine a graph, so like, like, let's have like an imaginary line here. Like this would be our X axis. Um, If you're doing that kind of work and like, it, it may not be the most fun all the time. Like you're, you're going down in terms of like our Y axis could be, fun, right? So fun, fun (laughs) over time, right? So you're, you're like doing hard stuff consistently kind of like brings you down. It's not fun, but then you're delaying your gratification. So eventually you go up, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whereas if you just sit on TikTok or watch porn or like waste all your time and eat cake, uh, like (laughs) your, your, your fun is going up, but eventually it's just going to go down. Yeah, right. it's a good, that's a good, yeah, that's a good way. It's almost like this immediate, like going into this type of endeavor, it goes, yeah. And then you're like, uh, fuck, fuck, fuck. And then over time, it's just, it's huge payoffs, which I totally is, yeah, resonates. That's a very good way to put it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's why everyone's depressed now because they're just on their phone, you know, instant gratification, scrolling, right? And 
hours will go by. They won't even realize it. And then they get all that, all those dopamine hits from going through their phone. And then like they, they come down, right. It's an addiction. People are, everyone's addicted to their phone. Like if it's that's bad. honestly what it is, you know, it's it, not downplaying it. It's actually an addiction. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You're right. You're hundred percent. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, but I mean, it's much more gratifying to, uh, you know, do the suffering and then go up through the other end. Uh, that's why I take cold showers. It's, it's like a nice wind in the morning. Right. Yeah, you dude. Take, you take cold showers? Yeah, man. Yeah, I take cold showers. Do you do the full thing? So here's what I do. I go in all the way cold, wash okay. my body, wash my hair, and then usually like, like, so that's like three minutes. And then like at the end, I'll make it warm for like a minute and like put my feet in and then uh, then I'll get out. I'm actually filming every single one of them. I'm going to make a YouTube video. Okay. 365 oh. cold showers. Ooh, how long? So you've been doing it for a year? I've been doing it since 2020, but I had the idea to create a video like recently in 2022 in summer. So nice. Yeah, dude, I did them from, uh, I started them in maybe late 2018. I did them straight for like two years. Every single shower was cold all the way through from until, until maybe within like 2020 at some point. And then I got serious with me and my girlfriend started getting more serious and she was like, well, don't you enjoy hot showers? I was like, well, yeah, I enjoy them. And she's like, well, why don't you just do both? I was like, what do you mean? She was like, we'll just do like half and half. And I was like, that's not that crazy of an idea. And so then I started just doing <laughs> half and half. So now I do half and half where it's like nice and hot. You get the nice like enjoyment from that. And then I crank it cold and just do deep breathing exercises for like two minutes in the, in the, the bitter ass cold as cold as it goes. And you live in Canada, so you know how cold the pipes get. Yeah, it's a lot harder in the winter, man. Dude, isn't it? In the summer, it's almost it's almost a joke for me. Like the the coldness of the water, it's almost like, why am I even doing this? In the in the winter, it's like, dude, it's the the, the water is almost just like stabbing you with ice crystals. How cold yeah. it gets in the winter. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> But you like them. I love them. I love cold showers. Oh, I I, I don't like them. I know I, I hate them, man. I, <laughs> I, I, like, seriously, it sucks. Like I, I never look forward to it, but I always feel good. I, it's just like a nice way to start the day, you know. Like you, I, like before I was doing them, I used to spend like twenty minutes in the shower in the morning. It's just like waste you know. of time. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's one of the reasons I started doing them too. It it uh, it changes the pace of your morning and of your entire day. I feel. Um, doing cold showers, it just kind of like puts you into into like overdrive into like do mode like right away, and um, yeah, I suppose I suppose now that I think about it, when I was doing them strictly, I didn't like them as much. I like I like I think I like them more because I end with them. Yeah, so yeah, probably. I, I backed off a little bit, but yeah, they do feel I, good afterwards. I uh, I don't do it on weekends. On weekends, I, I'm I'm normal, but. Uh, <laughs> throughout the week it's uh where we're going hardcore you know so dude what a way to get to start your day like in the pitch blackness of 6 a.m and then fucking exposing your just like being like oh fuck i gotta get in and you turn it on and you just stare at it for a few seconds and you go i gotta get in there or do you are you a psycho and you get in there and you turn it on and just let the cold hit you right away so what i do is like because i'm recording them all like I've okay got my, yeah yeah i've got my phone and like i i i take a video of me making it cold so everyone okay. can see that it like I'm not lying yeah. and it's actually yeah. cold and then I put it on selfie mode and then I just slowly back up into it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. See, cause I was going to say like, I never, when I did them uh, all the time, I never like got in and just turned it on and had it hit me right away. I would like turn it on and just like be like, just kind of like, like psych myself out. I'm like, fuck, I gotta get in there. I gotta get in there. And then just, so I do that essentially. Yeah. yeah cause, cause, to just turn it on yourself. Like something about that just seemed, seemed just <laughs> terrible, <laughs> even though it's like, it's not my, it's all terrible. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. That's, that's so interesting. You're the first person I've, I've talked to on the podcast that does that. Cause my friends think I'm crazy. Cause I still, I do them every day. I think your friends are crazy for not yeah, man. It. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Dude. I told, I, I want to get a, a cold plunge, but, uh, um, maybe someday, maybe someday. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just move to Ca of, move to Canada, you know. Just yeah, I'm I'm not far I'm not far off. I'm in Minnesota, so 
Oh, Minneapolis. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm actually further north than some of Canada. Uh, you're gonna make me. You're gonna make me look at a map. I don't. I don't know American geography as well. <laughs> Do you know? Uh, I, you know, I, I'm probably the same latitude as Toronto, maybe a little bit in further north. Um, okay, I see. I Minneapolis, see. Minneapolis, Minnesota, um, is where I'm at. So, Prince Town. It's the only thing we're famous for is Prince. So, and the Vikings. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's you, you. Yeah. Okay. You're not more northern than I am. Okay, so yeah. you beat me. Yeah. I, I I win. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Um well, hey man. Um so last thing, what do you gotta push? What what are some things we should know about that you're doing? Obviously the fifty two week. Um you wanna plug that? Yeah, a hundred percent. So um fifty two week guitar player is open for enrollment until March thirty first. We are only accepting ninety students. So you will have the next, well, I don't know when this podcast is going to be released, but whenever it's released, you have now until the 31st or until 90 people sign up, whichever comes first. Uh, and if you're interested in that, uh, head over to the 52 week guitar player, YouTube channel, or you can find my YouTube channel, Brandon Dion music, or just find me somewhere on social media and the link will be in a bio or something. I mean, there you, you go. Know. Yeah. I'll post it this weekend. I'll, this one, I'll, this one, will, I just posted the recent, uh, episode so this one will come up this weekend okay that since, yeah since, that works out since you named the since you put that date in there so i'll just i'll do that um makes sense oh you got it back there we go <laughs> well, well, battery's so, had time to yeah <laughs> dude i'll hold on to you for a second here but we'll say goodbye for the recording for now so i appreciate you being on and i'll stop the recording here if you'd like to join my Patreon to get your questions answered by the guests, then you can go to patreon.com slash Mike Salo. There are several tiers there that you can take part in and lots of different perks like pre-recorded guitar lessons or even one-on-one -on -one guitar lessons with me. There are live master classes every week for certain tiers. And again, you can go to patreon.com slash Mike Salo to check that out.